Hello everyone, in this video I'll be doing a tier list of the highest damage dealing subclasses in Baldur's Gate 3. So I'm going to be keeping this strictly to their damage and offensive potential, and this is going to include things like their summons and what else they can do to prepare ahead of time to deal the most amount of damage, and it's going to be ranked based on their other subclasses and obviously amongst each other. So first things first, we got the Berserker Barbarian, and I think that this is the highest damage barbarian so this is easily going to go up in the higher tiers because barbarians are actually a really good subclass and they pair well with some others like the fighter and the th rogue thief because you can add yourself a lot of enraged throws which adds a lot of damage to it and when you're raging you got good defensive so you can get in the fray of things and attack a lot of people i'm going to put the berserker barbarian up into the a tier i think it is an extremely powerful class it could potentially go up to the s tier of but I'm going to go A tier for right now. The Wild Heart is great as well. I would say the Wild Heart's probably a B tier class. I would recommend doing the Tiger Heart Barbarian because you get it. You can cleave twice with this class, and the cleaves hit up to three people and apply bleed to them. And then you can also lock them in place with a certain skill that you get later on. And the Wild Magic Barbarian. It's still a Barbarian at the end of the day. I think it's a good class, but I might have to put it lower in the F tier because if you're going for pure damage, you're better off going with the Berserker 9 times out of 10, and then the other one time would be the Wild Heart. So, yeah, that's where we're going to rank those. Next, we got the Lore Bard, and the Lore Bard is not a bad class overall. It gets the Magical Secrets at level 6 and level 10, so at level 6, it can get things like Spirit Guardians, which is a really good way to put out damage. I would say the Lore Bard is a very solid one, um, so I'm going to go with the A tier. Valor Bard's not bad either. They get medium armor and shield proficiency, but compared to the rest, I would put the Valor in the C tier and Sword Bard in the S tier. Sword Bard is one of the best subclasses in the game flat out uh, because it gets magical secrets at level 10, so you still get the same thing as what the Lore Bard gets, but you get two attacks at level 6. And one nice thing about the Sword Bard is you can get two attacks, get the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel, and then you can use crowd control spells as a bonus action. So you can do it all as a Sword Bard. It's a very powerful class. And the Magical Secrets, you can take Cone of Cold for really great cold damage, which can be set up with other classes to deal double damage with Create Water. So I think the Sword Bard is one of the most offensive, highest damage dealing classes, with the Lore Bard coming close, and then Valor Bard just outclassed. Next, we got clerics, and there's multiple different subclasses of clerics. Um, this is a very offensive class, so it is going to be a little bit stronger, but I want to weigh these amongst each other. Tempest Cleric being the S tier choice here. I guess I'll start with this one. Uh, so it gets a reaction lightning damage. You get create water, you get call lightning, and you get the ability as your channel divinity to be able to deal the maximum amount of lightning damage. So what does this mean? If you subclass and add in something that can get like chain lightning, like a wizard, because um, this is a full spellcaster as well, you can do chain lightning and make it do 80 damage and force it to hit its maximum damage roll. And then with Create Water, that's doubled for 160 damage, and that spreads to three targets. So Tempest Cleric is probably one of the best in the game. Uh, Storm Sorcerer and Draconic pair well with this as well. Knowledge Cleric, or I guess, yeah, Light Cleric is also, I would say, an S tier choice, because you can put up Spirit Guardians and run around dropping Fireballs, and uh, it's a very offensive class. The Tempest gets Heavy Armor, but the Light Cleric only gets Medium, but it's still an incredibly powerful class. And then I would say the third best would be the uh, War Cleric, um, I'm going to put it in the A tier. The War Cleric gets a bonus action attack, and it's actually the best single level dip, I would say, for most classes. Because if you're looking for heavy armor, the War Cleric's going to give you it. And it's going to give you three attacks with a bonus action uh, per long rest. So that's really good. The Life Cleric's okay, but for damage dealing, it's more so f a healer. So this isn't like a bad thing. This was normally a really good class. Uh, Nature Cleric's probably ahead of life cleric because you get shalala early on which is a good damage cantrip or a good damage spell to add on to your uh att weapon attacks trickery is probably c tier and then knowledge i'll probably put f tier it's just not as damage dealing uh, compared to the others tempest i just need to make a balance so we're gonna go f tier not a bad class just not as damage dealing i could put it in the c tier land druid Moon Druid, Spore Druid. They're very different. They're underrated, though. I think the Land Druid has some interesting uses. I'm going to put it into the... I'm going to put Land Druid A tier. 
you can go with the circle of the land do like an arctic druid so you get create water and like the cold spells and call lightning which is really nice synergy and then on top of that you got your wild shape so if you need a little extra temporary health you can wild shape into an owl bear and get like 92 health out of that twice <laughs> and that's really great the Moon Druid, same deal. Uh, you get three attacks in your Wild Shape form. You can turn into a Miramadon, the Fire Miramadon, or the Air Miramadon being two of the strongest. S adding in Tavern Brawler to add damage riders to that too. Really powerful. And the Spore Druid, I would also say, is an A tier. All three of them are great. The Spore Druid is like you can summon a bunch of zombies and uh, have those for extra damage output. And they also soak up hits for your team. But the really good damage dealing because you can use a lot of necrotic spells aren't the best spells but with the staff of cherished necromancy a spore druid can actually be really good because they can continually cast circle of death um very powerful class all three of these battle master fighter i would say the battle master's s tier uh all fighters are great uh the battle master just gets the maneuvers though and it can add the superiority die to its attacks if you're half orc focusing on like critical hits the battle master is really great the champion's good too for the critical hit attacks uh but the battle master just adds a whole lot more with the battle maneuvers and you can even use things like rally to pick up your teammates if they get down so the battle master really great damage dealer Eldritch Knight, also awesome. You get, like, access to things like Shield, uh, Long Strider, Find Familiar, uh, Magic Missile. You do have to invest in Intelligence if you want to attack with your spells, but Long Strider for extra movement speed and the Bound Weapon to throw. Like, this is the best throwing, throwing build in the game because you can bind your weapon and it'll continually return to your hand, so you just keep throwing and throwing. Uh, and the Champion is also really good, too. I, I don't want to put it in the B tier, but... I'll put it in the A tier. Yeah, we'll go with that. I might have to adjust some of these near the end, but I'm going to go champion A tier because crit stacking is pretty good, honestly. And you get an extra fighting style. So you can get the great weapon master, plus you could get armor. The plus uh, protection, armor class plus one. So a good class. Archfey, Fiend, and the great old one. This is a tricky one for damage because the Archfey is probably the weakest. I'll put a C tier. The Fiend is good. I would say the Fiend's probably like the... the best the great old one's good too though um i'll put them both in the b tier i feel like of the three like casters with uh sorcerer wizard and warlock the warlock's just lesser in damage output you do get cool things like hunger of Adar, life drinker so you're kind of a hybrid between like a attacker and a caster they're good but i feel like just the damage output you're better off going with other classes now the open hand monk with three levels of rogue thief Using the uh, Gloves of Soul Rejuvenation and Tavern Brawler with a Strength Potion. You can do, like, easy S tier. This is probably the highest damage. Single target damage class in the game is probably an open hand monk. Uh, with all those extra damage riders. You can literally... Because you can attack twice. So if you have that plus 1d10 force damage from your gloves, that's applied twice. Um, it does a ton of damage. It has a lot of dice rolls on its attacks. And if you get the three bonus actions, you can continue to do flurry of blows, and you can knock people prone with it. And an extremely power powerhouse class for sure. Shadow Monk is good. I'm still gonna put I would put in the B tier because monks are actually really powerful. Four elements is also probably like a B tier. It's just no. Yeah, if you want to go, ah, it's tough because casting with this just isn't as good as being a sorcerer, which you should just do. Or if you want to be a caster with wisdom be a cleric uh the four elements just i feel like is not as good because using your key points for your uh generation of spells at weaker levels which is not as good as other dedicated classes paladins oath of the ancients is more healer focus i'm gonna paladins are huge with their smites uh very strong damage output i'll probably put ancients ancients devotion vengeance vengeance i'll put an s tier because the paladin extremely powerful smites crit smites very busted powerful you can also do like a sorcerer in sorcerer uh paladin a warlock paladin warlock paladin is really great it was my first ever class and i did vengeance and oathbreaker which are very strong alongside the fiend um i guess oathbreaker would also oathbreaker is up there too yeah we'll, we'll put them in the s tier paladins are strong um maybe i'll put it a tier vengeance just is the strongest i would say physically oathbreaker ah, that's tricky i'll just put oathbreaker s tier paladins are good Hunter, single target damage, great, A tier. Um, what's good about the Hunter is at, at a level 11, it's a little bit late to get its class, subclass additions, but you can do a crazy amount of damage with it. Um, you get the volley attack, which can hit a ton of times. Beastmaster is probably a B tier in comparison, because 
the summons are really good. Uh, I don't want to underrate it, but I feel like Gloomstalker is probably like the best of the three, and I'm going to put in the A tier. Gloomstalker actually for single target. If you add in the Gloomstalker, you get an extra attack on your um, first move, turn of combat with extra damage. Um, the Gloomstalker brings a lot of cool things like Night Vision too. So yeah, I feel like Gloomstalker is great. Yeah, so we'll go with Gloomstalker S tier, Hunter, Beastmaster. It's a great one to add into people or add into people, add into your classes. Next we have the Arcane Trickster. This is a single worst class in Baldur's Gate 3 by a good margin. Just because it didn't doesn't translate as well from D&D &D to a video game setting. Uh, your only good benefit is you get Mage Hand that's turned invisible. Whoop-de-woo. Um, the Githy Yankee get that as well. <laughs> so, yeah. F tier for that, unfortunately. The Assassin, however, is great. I would put the Assassin up in probably the A tier. Uh, because you can add this to a lot of classes. And the First turn damage that you can do is crazy. Gloomstalker 2 and a Fighter would be a great combination of 3. The Rogue Thief, however, I'm going to put in the S tier. Because 3 levels of this can empower so many of these. Uh, an extra bonus action is huge. When you got classes like the Open Hand Monk that can do an attack that does like upwards of... My build 78 damage, but I've seen people get higher depending on your gear and your setup throughout the game. Uh, Ascended Asterion can do like 100 damage with his bonus action. The Thief adds a lot to all their classes. And an extra bonus action, that just means a crossbow, hand crossbow attack. It's extra damage, worthwhile taking. Wild Magic Sorcerer. At the end of the day, Wild Magic Sorcerer is still a sorcerer. Extremely powerful. Uh, just backfires more than you want it to. Draconic Sorcerer. I would have to put up in the top of the, a or top of the S tier. I can't, I'm hard to rank these within tiers, but I'll try to at the end. Storm Sorcerer. Very powerful as well. At level 11, the Draconic gets the ability to fly using movement speed. Or your movement. Uh, yeah, movement in Baldur's Gate 3. Whereas the Storm Sorcerer has to use a bonus action. But they get it at level 1. So early on, the Storm Sorcerer is really good defensively. And I guess the Draconic is good too. Because you get the Draconic Resilience. Which is basically mage armor at all times. Uh, without spell slot. So, extremely powerful. Uh, you can twin cast, you can twin haste, give yourself an extra action, and then use your bonus action for another spell with your quickened meta magics. The sorcerer is an extremely powerhouse of a class, my favorite class by far. I could talk about this all day, but the draconic sorcerer in particular gets resistance to the damage type that you choose. I would recommend doing lightning or cold, and then on top of that, you also deal your charisma modifier in increased of that damage type. So if you get lightning, you get a plus five or plus six or plus seven to your. Uh, crit to your cold damage or lightning damage, which is absolutely huge when create water will double that to 14. So yeah, extremely powerful class. I don't want to talk too much about it, but yeah, play a sorcerer. You'll have a lot of fun. Next we got the wizard subclasses to end off. And I would say the strongest wizard necromancers are great because they can summon two summons for the price of one spell. And uh, that allows you to put up a lot of damage output if you build around it and use certain items. Like the, uh, you get a headband from Balthazar that halves the physical damage that they take. I would say that necromancy is probably like, it's tough. I would probably say for offensive, the wizard just, I feel like the wizard is like A tier at its highest for damage dealing the wizard's just like it's versatile it's not a sorcerer which can blast people with like two spells in a turn uh so it's hard to compare it because it's just it's more about utility and versatility i would say that the necromancer is one of the best it also heals itself and the um i would say evocation because it adds an intelligence modifier to the damage and then the next best would be probably conjuration's pretty good i'm gonna put them all i would say at the end of the day, a wizard can do it all. So I'll put them all in the B tier. Um, Transmutation is cool because you get a little stone that you can hand to someone in your party. But there it is. That is my tier list of the highest damaging subclasses in Baldur's Gate 3. I feel like some of these could move up or down depending on how you have them built out. For instance, the Spore Druid could actually probably be an S tier. I want to move them up there because they get an exclusive armor piece that's only exclusive to them. And what it does is you can apply haste spores to your entire team and it doesn't have a, the lethargic effect after it. So you can cast it for literally just give your entire team haste. You can put it into, into turn-based mode at the start before you do combat and give your entire team haste if you clutter them together. That alone can make it a very powerful build. The land druid and the moon druid are great too though. Um, 
But I do think that the Open Hand Monks probably like Open Hand Monk, Sword Bart, and Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer are the three strongest. With the Open Hand Monk probably being the best single target, the Draconic being like the best at um, like area of effect with Chain Lightnings and Cone of Cold. And then the Sword Bard can attack twice and do Cone of, or do Cone of Cold, so it can kind of do a little bit of both. But then it could also do a lot of crowd control, which is important because if you can do a hold person and get your other teammates doing critical hits and then yourself doing critical hits, that's high damage. So, yeah, that is my thoughts on the highest damaging subclass in Baldur's Gate 3. Let me know what your comments are and, the, and your thoughts on this because there's a lot of different ways we could go about doing this. And you may not agree with some of these because, yeah, I'm just trying to compare them amongst the other subclasses and then amongst the same class subclasses. So, yeah, let me know your comments. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you found this video fun or useful, please hit the subscribe button below, and I'll see you all in the next video.